How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. This is for those of you that like to use the AIO switch updater app to update your CFW packs. And if you don't know what that is, this pretty much allows you to download and update the CFW packs just from your switch using Wi-Fi, which I'm going to be showing later. Well, in this video, we're going to be using my modified version of the AIO switch updater app. And it's just the exact same app as the regular AIO switch updater. But this one points to my CFW packs that I uh, make for the community. So um, we're going to be doing that in the video. Also, in my modified version, I added the latest switch firmware, which is 18.1.0. So when you use the app and update your CFW pack, you can then go back into the switch updater app and then download the 18.1.0 and then use daybreak to update and it's going to be all done through your switch so with that being said let's go ahead and check it out okay so before we get started i would like to say something in the description there's going to be a, a link to my other video on updating the cfw packs manually and the reason why i'm doing this is because just in case this app doesn't work for you and you cannot get back on to your CFW. You can follow that video and everything should work out just fine. It's just in case, because I don't know why, for some reason, the app doesn't work for a lot of people. And I'm going to assume that it's because people use different packs from different places. And when they use my, my app, it's my pack. And I don't know if it's conflicting files or something, but it's going to work for me here. And I hope it works for you too. But this is just in case it doesn't work for you, then you can follow that other video and everything will be just fine. <laughs> so with that being said, let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is download this one zip file for today. And it's gonna be called the other side AIO switch updater. So if you look in the description, there's going to be a text line that says, click here to download the other side AIO switch updater app or something like that. Once you click on that link, it's going to take you to my GitHub page. And from there, you could just go down to the assets tab and then click on that link to download this one zip file. After that, you can have it move to the desktop like I have done already. OK, so the next thing we can do is open up the SD card. And it doesn't matter how you open up your SD card as long as you're able to transfer your files successfully. I use many different things, but in this video, I'm using the SD card tools from Hecate. Very reliable, never have any issues. And you can also plug it to your PC and access your SD card without having to take it out. So with that being said, once you have the SD card open, you're going to navigate to the zip file. And I always use 7-zip to extract my files. You can use whatever you want, but I recommend using 7-zip. And if you want to follow along with me, I'll leave a download link to 7-zip in the description as well. But with 7-zip, I'm going to right click on my zip file and then open up the tab for 7-zip and then click on open archive. Once the archive is open, we have this one switch folder here and we're going to want to extract this folder onto the root of the SD card. That's the empty space around here. And you don't want to drop it into a folder because then it's not going to work. So you're going to highlight the folder on the archive. And then right here, I usually like to put it on the root and then extract. So mine says that it has the file already named. You can just go ahead and replace the file if you have the older version. And there we go. So you might not have that message of replacing the file if it's your first time, but I already had it on my SD card. That's why it told me. But that's pretty much it. Now we have the switch updater app on the SD card. We can go ahead and try it out. So I'm going to eject out of my SD card and I'm going to launch into my CFW. So I'll meet you when I'm back on the switch. All right, so once we're on the switch and before we try the switch updater app, I just want to show you for context my switch firmware version and CFW version. So right now I'm on 18.0.0 switch firmware and AMS CFW 1.7.0, which right now at the time of this video, the current version of the switch firmware is 18.1.0 and AMS is at 1.7.1. So after we're done with updating CFW, I'm going to come back here and show y'all that it's going to be 18.00, but now my AMS is going to be 1.71, which supports 18.1.0. After we have 1.71, 
AMS. Then we can go back into the app and then download the 18.1.0 firmware and then use Daybreak to update. So I'll be showing that. I just want to give you a little bit of context before we do. So now that we've seen my firmware version, let's go ahead and try out the app. All right, so when you're going to be using the switch updater app, I highly recommend using the HP menu without applet mode. And in order to do this, there's two ways that you can. You can use a folder to enter HP menu without applet mode. And if you're interested in this, you can leave a comment down below. Or you can do a title override in which you hold the right shoulder button and keep holding it and enter any one of your installed titles and it will enter the HP menu without applet mode. So keep holding right shoulder button and here is hb menu without apple mode you would know if it is or not by seeing the big red letters of the apple mode on the top of the hb menu so once you're inside the hb menu without apple mode then you can navigate to the app that is my modified version of the switch fd app and you'll know that it's my modified version if you look at the picture and it says the other side aio switch updater so before we enter this app, I would also like to mention that you do need to have Wi-Fi on in order for this to work. You need to have an internet connection, I mean. And also, if you want to be extra careful, if you have any type of protections like uh, 90s DNS or Exosphere, that'd be up to you. But you need an internet connection in order for this to work. So let's go ahead and enter it. All right, so this is the AIO switch updater app. And before we continue, I would just like to quickly say that I modified this app, but I did not create it. So I just want to give credit to where it's due. The dev is right there, right in the middle. I didn't change anything else. It's still the same app. All I did was just change the way the app looks for the links for the CFW, in which this case is looking for mine now. So with that being said, if you have an internet connection, you should be able to go down to update atmosphere and you should be able to see my pack there. So if you can, then great. But if you cannot, then maybe something wrong with your internet connection and try and fix that. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, there should be no other reason why it's not showing up. So if you can see it, good. But before we continue, I would just like to say that in the update bootloaders, also there is my pack for the Hecate because I have two different packs the AMS and the Hecate, and they go together to create the one uh, CFW pack. And then last, we have the download firmwares in which I added my personal dump of the firmware 18.1.0. And then you can download this firmware and then just go to the daybreak and update. So just wanna get that out there. Now let's go ahead and update our CFW pack. So go back up to atmosphere and this is pretty simple. And straightforward all you need to do is just click on it it's going to say downloading depending on your internet speed and then click on continue so we're downloading the pack now and it says do you want to overwrite existing i and i config files i click yes but i'm going to say it's up to you and this one's the important one. Would you like to delete all custom sys module startup flags? This will turn off all sys modules and prevent crashes if you do not have the support for the latest atmosphere. So just click on yes, because um, a lot of things need to be updated and you might have some crashing issues when you try to um, get into CFW um, because of those sys modules. So now that we have it extracted, it says here, do you also want to download the Hecate? And it says right there, downloading the other side, Hecate 6.2.0. You also have to click on yes, because these packs need to be together in order for it to work. Same thing, same question. Do you want to overwrite existing INI config files? Click on yes. Sometimes no. I don't know why people have issues and they have to click on no. But once it's done, it says the switch will now reboot to a special payload and then just click on back. So now the switch is going to reboot. And if the pack works well, you should boot back into Hecate. So now on the top of Hecate, let me switch my camera view. All right, so I know that it's blurry, but I just want to show you that it boot back into Hecate and on the top it should say Hecate 6.2.0. And all you need to do is just go to launch and then choose one of the options here. 
So on my previous video, I did explain what these options are. But the first one is OFW, which has no CFW at all in it. The second one is um, CFW on Sysnand with the Fusey bin. And this, uh, the third one is also EMU MMC with Fusey bin. The fourth and the fifth one are FSSO, which point to the package three in Hecate. And I have all these options just in case one of the options doesn't work for you. You can try either or. So I always pick this one works for me and it should boot up just fine. If it works for you, you should be able to go back into the switch just fine. So let me switch this view so that way you can see it better. OK, so back on the switch, we can go down to settings and check to see if we are updated. So if you remember when I first started, I was on 18.0.0 with AMS 1.7.0. Now it has been updated to AMS 1.7.1 and I have an S because I'm using my CFW on Sysnan. If you have an E, that's because you're using yours on MMC. But it doesn't matter if you have an S or an E, it will work for both. So we are in fact updated and you can also check because this has the Tesla menu. And if you don't know how to open the Tesla menu, you can hold the left shoulder button, hold down on the D-pad and press the right analog. And if the Tesla menu pops up, then you also know that it's working. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. Now we have updated CFW. If you want to go back into the AIO switch updater and now update to 18.1.0, you can go ahead and follow these steps. So I know it's going to be a long video, but you should be used to it now by now of my long videos. So entering the HP menu without Apple mode, we can go back into the AIO switch updater app. But before we do that, make sure you have internet connection. And once we do that, we can go down to firmwares now and click on firmware 18.1.0. Once that is downloaded, we can go ahead and download this. And depending on your internet speeds, it may take longer or may go faster. Okay, so once the download and extraction has completed, it's gonna ask you if you want to launch the daybreak to install the sys update. You can go ahead and click on yes. But for some reason, sometimes it does give this error here saying that there's no update found in the folder. All you need to do is just click on back and this is the beginning of daybreak. Just go ahead and click on install. And then you're gonna look for the firmware folder which automatically creates a firmware folder for you and click on it. And then it's going to have the 18.1.0 there. Just go ahead and click on that. And Daybreak should try now to validate and see if it works. Okay, so it does say that it is valid. 18.1.0. After this, you're going to click on continue. Then you're going to want to click on preserve settings. And then you're going to want to click on install FAT32 plus XFAT. And then you're going to want to click on a continue to proceed. So now it's doing the update. After the update is complete, it should restart or right there, uh, do a reboot. And it's going to go back into Hecate because you're using my pack. So once it reboots, it should go back into Hecate. There you go. Once it does, go back into launch and launch into CFW. So once we're back on the switch, it should show now that we are on 18.1.0 uh, and AMS 1.7.1 thus completing the entire update of CFW and switch firmware. All right, so if you're back on the switch, everything should be updated and we can go ahead and check that out by going to system settings, go all the way down to system. And then now you can see that my system update is on the latest switch firmware right now, which is 18.1.0 and AMS is at 1.7.1. So, Everything should be working just fine. You can test it by opening the Tesla menu, should be working. And if you can enter any type of your titles, then you know it's working. But any type of forwarders also is a good sign that it's working. So if I'm able to enter here, it should be just fine. So that's pretty much it. Um, I know it's a long video, but I just wanted to get this out there for y'all. Um, I may make this into a part two, but we'll see how it goes. Um, with that being said, I hope everything works for you like it just did for me. And if it doesn't, of course, you can leave a comment down below and I'll try and help you out as best as I can. But um, other than that, I really appreciate those of you that have taken the time to watch my videos. Also support the channel. 
with uh, likes and shares and donations. I definitely appreciate it. It's really kind of y'all to be doing such things like that for the channel, for me. So thank you again. And as always, I will see you on the next one.